Welcome to another bonus episode of The Dark Parade. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Hey everyone, welcome back to another bonus episode. Um, this one is going to be another twofer like we did with the gallows, although unlike the gallows, we're going to spend a little more time on, on the second one other uh, than just to say, hey, the gallows act two isn't very good. But uh, I've, I'm a little bit influenced by watching that documentary on Shudder, Woodlands Dark and Days Bewitched, I believe is the name of it. A big three and a half hour beast of a, a documentary about folk horror. Really good, really well researched, uh, really interesting, a lot of different perspectives. Fantastic. If you haven't seen that, it, it's worth getting shutter just to watch that. Uh, in, in the wake of that, I started to look around for some folk horror found footage movies to see, you know, like that seems like a great marriage. Uh, the idea that you uh, are, are carrying a camera around and all of a sudden weird stuff uh, starts to pop off in a strange town or something like that. And so I've got a couple of examples here that I want to talk about uh, that are, are certainly found footage folk horror adjacent, if not outright uh, found footage folk horror. Um, I think the classic example... And, and we'll probably get to this at one point or another, is a movie called, I, I believe the alternate title is Final Prayer, but I always saw it as Borderlands, where uh, the, like a team of researchers go to investigate this, uh, th this remote uh, sort of monastery or, or some sort of religious building, and uh, one thing leads to another, and the, it, it's got a really fantastic conclusion and as i remember it uh the rest of the movie was okay but the end is really good it's a sort of a uh taking of deborah logan scenario where a lot of it is okay uh some of it's good some of it's less good but then the the ending is such a banger that it really hangs with you so uh yeah that's how i i remember borderlands but i almost included that here but i wanted to do some stuff that i hadn't seen before and so we're going to start with a film called Crone Wood from 2016. This is uh, written and directed by a guy named Mark Sheridan, uh, who this is the only feature that he has done as of this recording. Did a lot of uh, short horror films. And it uh, stars Ed Murphy and Elva Trill. Um, and the idea is... There is uh, a couple that have kind of hooked up together for the first time. It goes sort of a one night stand sort of thing, but they're going to breakfast the next day. And Danny as played by Ed Murphy uh, essentially says like, I kind of don't want this to end. Like the, you seem really nice and I, I don't want this to just be a one night thing. And she agrees. And she says, I've got a crazy idea. Would you like to go camping? And we'll see if we're really compatible. And he's a little skeptical at first, but then they agree and they end up uh, going out into uh, a remote area where uh, Haley um, says she is is from. She is from that area and, and talks about uh, how they used to call these woods Crone Wood because of this story of a witch. And as they start camping out in this area, uh, they start to see some folks uh, milling about. And uh, looking creepy, wearing some kind of baby face masks, not entirely unlike uh, a happy death day, but a little more homemade than that. And uh, v very creepy masks, as most masks I find are. Uh, anyway, so, you know, it kind of goes from there. It's sort of a mystery of like, who are these people? What do they want? Um, it, it definitely descends into an area where... It feels very Wicker Man inspired. Uh, I don't think I'm giving too much away by saying that. Um, but anyway, there. I'll tell you. All right, let's get into it. As with all of these movies, we judge them based on five criteria, right? So you know the basics of Crone Wood. So let's talk about uh, whether or not the tropes inherent to the found footage uh, genre are alive and well in Crone Wood and how they are served. 
And so, uh, rule number one, you got to keep the camera on. And how does this movie justify that? Well, eh, it's hit and miss, I think. Uh, for the most part, it's just, hey, I've got this camera and, and I'm going to keep it on. Um, once things really start to turn south, um, there's sort of a suggestion like, oh, well, I'm keeping the camera on so that we can provide evidence for the police when we go to them later. And then at a certain point, it doesn't make a ton of sense. I, you know, the camera's being used for light a little bit, but even that feels uh, like a bit of a push at times. So it's only about half effective in terms of, of why the camera is kept on in this movie. Um, so eh, let's say on a scale of five, eh, like a two and a half, three on keeping the camera on. Uh, then we get to the characters and I actually think the movie, uh, excels in this area. Uh, I think both Danny and Haley, your two main characters are interesting and you know, there's something about like, Oh, they're kind of young and in love and you get to see them you know, sort of argue and, and start to learn about each other and, and not always, uh, take the other person's side and that kind of thing. So I think that's actually kind of interesting. I think the characters, uh, are pretty good. There aren't a lot of other characters in the movie. Um, the ones that do appear aren't really well drawn. They're just sort of, you know, the characters they need to be, uh, for the horror part of it to, uh, to, to kick in. Um, but I would say, you know, this is like a three and a half, four, uh, as far as the characters. Then we get to authenticity, like the veracity of the movie. How real does this actually feel? And that again, I think is probably a solid four. I don't, I, I don't think the movie is completely ridiculous. It like, I almost said unrealistic, but you know, this is all fantasy and folk horror and whatnot, but it is, uh, it is authentic in the sense that this is all stuff that you could, within the context of the movie, this all feels like a thing that could happen. Um, and it never gets so ridiculous that you think this is, like, this is just impossible. Um, so the authenticity scores pretty high for me. Um, then you get to the watchability, and this is a more of a mixed bag. Um... It, the the opening is really strong. The end is interesting, if uh, not entirely effective. And there are some moments in the middle where it begins to drag some because you start to feel like you're kind of spinning your wheels as they're just wandering around the woods a little bit until you kick into the third act when you realize, like, oh, there's this whole other thing going on with this town that, that's nearby and that kind of thing. And, and that stuff works pretty well, but I do think that the pacing is a little bit of a problem. This almost feels like, I know the director had previously done mostly short films, and this feels like a short film stretched into feature length uh, to some extent that maybe if this movie were about half as long as it was, uh, I think it might be better uh, for for uh, having a little bit tighter editing and and a little bit more brisk pacing. Um, because unlike the Wicker Man, where you sort of live in this town and, and see the, the citizens going about their business and that kind of thing and unravel this mystery, even though there is a mystery to unravel in Crone Wood, um, there just aren't the characters and the, and the sort of attention to the culture, the way that the Wicker Man, uh, pays attention to its, its world building. So... Uh, the watchability is a little thinner. I, I don't think it's terrible uh, in terms of you know being a, a real slog to get through, uh, but it it could benefit from some editing is all I'm saying. Uh, and that brings us to our, our fifth and final uh, look at uh, if the film is successful or, or not. And that scares. And this is another place. It's kind of tough because... Folk horror, I do not find outright horrifying. Um, this movie, I will give credit uh, to for not relying on a bunch of jump scares, which I appreciate. I don't know that it's particularly scary. It's kind of interesting. And I will say, like, this is getting away from scares a little bit, but I would be remiss not to mention this. That there is a moment in this film 
where uh, one of the the characters, uh, they're trying to determine fertility from this guy. And the way that she does it, again, slight spoilers for Crone Wood, uh, she climbs on this guy and fucks him, uh, a.k.a. has uh, the sex with him. And when <laughs> when they're done, she reaches between her legs and gives it like a little dip with her fingers and then tastes his semen to determine his fertility. And I don't say that to be, you know, gross or explicit. I say that because I was like watching it. I don't know if I've ever seen that in a movie before. If I have, I don't remember it. And now whenever I think of Crone Wood, I'm going to think of that. And so that's what I think of. Is it scary? No. Is it memorable? Yes. And I will give points to Crone Wood for that. Um, but it is derivative. It does feel like this is a, a, a movie where somebody watched The Wicker Man and was like, I think I can do a cheap version of that found footage wise. And so where do we land with Crone Wood ultimately? I'm afraid this is kind of a middling two and a half. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend Crone Wood, but if the things I have said to you about, hey, there's this kind of folk horror mystery found footage movie, um, it it's not great. But if that idea appeals to you, and if you just want to see a woman taste another man's semen to determine his fertility, then, you know, you should check out Crone Wood. Uh, it, it's not... Uh, something I'm going to uh, go out of my way to recommend to people, but neither would I tell anyone. If you if you enjoy the movie more than me, then I wouldn't tell you you were wrong. I would say I felt like it took too long to get to an ending that ultimately was not as satisfying as I had hoped. Um, so that is uh, our our first of this pair of found footage folk horror movies. The second one is a uh, a more recent movie from 2020 called They're Outside, directed by Sam Casserly and er Errol Anthony Hales, uh, and written by the latter, Errol Anthony Hales, I think is the guy's name. He has written a, <laughs> a couple of other movies, uh, including uh, Heckle, uh, which is uh, apparently a movie about an insane heckler. Um, and the other director of the film, Sam Casserly, has only directed this and, and a short film. So, uh, you know, relatively n fresh faces in terms of, uh, of filmmaking. So the premise of this one is that there's a guy who runs a YouTube channel and he's kind of a, a, a pop psychologist. You know, he, he believes that there is... Uh, sort of a, an answer for everything. Every psychological problem has a, a solution, if not a simple solution, at least one that can be achieved, that there is no such thing as a, a psychological problem that can't be solved. And so he ends up uh, hooking up with a, a woman who is agoraphobic, uh, which means that she does not uh, want to go outside, can't go outside, has an absolute freak out when, when uh, she does. So... Uh, this guy ends up taking, you know, his one woman crew and his girlfriend, uh, as it happens into, uh, this woman's house and sets up a camera and starts filming his work to try to help her go outside. And she's somewhat terrified, uh, and, and held inside by this idea that there is something supernatural waiting for her outside. Uh, a, a creature known as green eyes, the, the sort of, um, you know, local boogeyman that lives in the woods and will take you to this, uh, this land that he rules where you will be trapped forever and be driven all crazy like. And so this guy gets to work, you know, trying to solve her problems. But as with all of, uh, this kind of movie, um, he discovers that maybe there is something more going on than, uh, he had initially thought that perhaps there is a supernatural component uh, to her fears, um, but also reveals along the way, you know, things like, oh my goodness, she actually is going outside, but she's doing it in these fugue states and doesn't remember it. And, oh, by the way, there was also this backstory of my uh, fiance, this one I was going to marry and uh, who ended up dying. And um, so... A lot of, lot of texture with all of that stuff and, uh, again, leads to 
um, kind of a, a raucous conclusion where, you know, things may not be exactly as they seem and so forth. And so their outside, of course, is going to get the patented uh, found footage full treatment. And so let us begin. Number one, keeping the camera on. Does it make sense to keep the uh, the camera on in this movie? And I would say more so than Crone would because their outside is all about filming this YouTube channel documentary, you know, or, the, you know, a webisode. And so it makes perfect sense to keep the camera on as much as possible. And then we come to characters, and th I think uh, this also scores well. I would probably say that keeping the camera on thing is uh, a pretty solid four out of five. The characters I would also give about a four out of five too. The the character of the pop psychologist is a little deeper than you uh, first think. At first, he just seems like kind of a knucklehead, and then you realize like, oh, there's actually this underlying trauma. Um, and, and so you don't want to dismiss that character completely out of hand. He's a little more interesting than, uh, he first presents and, and also the, the character, uh, that he is trying to help a woman named Penny and he is, uh, as he's working with her, you, you start to realize like, oh, there's, um, definitely more going on with her as well. And she's got the, this friend of hers, uh, that, comes over uh and and is sort of her link to the outside world and they have uh, a pretty good relationship and that this other woman sarah um i think is also really interesting in the movie you know she almost has this kind of flirtation with uh the main character and and i really like the dynamics between all these characters uh i i think that it it's it's an interesting film in terms of the way that all of these people kind of bounce off one another. So I think that that's quite good as well. Um, you, when you get to authenticity, again, I think this rates uh, quite high uh, because this all feels like something like they, this is beyond, um, you know, some of the cheaper found footage fare that we've done where this takes a fairly realistic scenario and does the more modern horror take on it where it's like, let's take this drama and add these, you know, supernatural and horrific elements to it. And so that's kind of what you're getting with there outside. And I, I think all of that stuff works uh, pretty well. I think that's all pretty interesting. Um, then you get to watchability and the watchability is, th this is where we run into some problems, ladies and jelly spoons, um, because much like, crone wood there are moments when you're watching this where you're like i get it i understand what you're going for here and a lot of it feels very rote and i don't i hesitate to use the word hack but it it does feel very um very predictable and as you get deeper into the movie you start to realize like oh i know what's going on here i understand what is happening with this woman. I understand where things are headed. Uh, and it, it just ends up being kind of an unsurprising film. And there is no, <laughs> there is no worse feeling for me watching a movie than knowing full well where it's going a little too early in the proceedings where you just want the movie to hurry up and get there. And even though I think the characters are interesting, you know, it, they're not so interesting and they're not so well written that it makes up for the fact that all of this feels pretty routine in the world of horror movies. So the watchability is more like, mm, like a two, two and a half. And then that brings us to scares and man, man, I wanted this movie to be a little creepier. That is one of the biggest complaints I have with their outside is you've got these pretty good characters. The story isn't bad. I wish it had been a little more, bit more mysterious. I wish there had been more to reveal, but the biggest problem is it just never gets around to being scary. There are times where 
the movie kind of sets up a scare and it just never comes. And I understand the uh, the desire to subvert expectations in a movie like this to separate yourself from the pack. But also, you're still a horror movie and you should be doing horror movie stuff. And when it finally happens, you just don't care. There, there's a whole period where the, the two main characters are kind of lost in the woods for a period of time. Not quite Blair Witch length, but for a while and it just gets real tedious at that point and it drains the movie of any tension and you know maybe you could argue this is a little bit of a watchability problem as well but yeah between the two that like it it meanders a little bit uh too much and by the time you get to the point where the movie should be scary it you're kind of checked out because nothing's been happening for 15 or 20 minutes. And once you get to the, the big reveals at the end, there are some really interesting ideas at the very end of this movie, but it's just not enough. It's just not enough to, to make it a movie that is, is sort of a must see. Um, and unfortunately that means that this movie kind of lands in the same place that crone wood does at about a two and a half, uh, which in my mind is like, this is a totally average movie. Um, not going to be upset if you tell me you like it, but if you tell me you don't like it, I get that too. Uh, and I hate to be purple state bow as has been mentioned, uh, in our, uh, podcast on science craze, which if you haven't listened to that, I would recommend that, but yeah, it, it's, both of these movies are real middling efforts, but that's still better than some of the stuff we've been watching. Like this isn't total, the total dregs, like, uh, some of the movies we've seen lately, but neither one are, are capitalizing on their premise in a way that make them kind of terrific. You know, like the, the end of kill list, the Ben Wheatley movie, like I want the found footage version of that. Uh, where it is just this, you know, really propulsive, interesting, not entirely explained affair, um, where you kind of fill in some of the gaps and uh, nonetheless, it's still really frightening, intense and exciting. And I just haven't found that in the found footage world yet. So what that means is you are going to have to uh, recommend some movies to me. You can do that on facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash dark parade. You can hit me on Twitter at dark parade pod, uh, or you can just email me at Bo, uh, that's B O uh, at Legion podcasts.com. And uh, drop me a line. If you know of a, a folk horror found footage movie that I ought to be watching, uh, let me know because I am totally down to find one that actually, you know, fulfills the premise. And I would argue that Borderlands is maybe the best example of that that I am uh, I'm aware of currently. And I, I think that one ends really well uh, and has some interesting stuff. And at some point I may go back and revisit that one. But uh, yeah, so that is it for a, a twofer, a two pack of uh, full core found footage movies. Um, as always, I really appreciate you guys, uh, listening to these bonus episodes and allowing me to exorcise these movies from, from my brain, uh, so that I don't have to think about them anymore. Although I probably, uh, will think about how, uh, that woman tasted that guy's semen to determine if he was fertile or not. Uh, well done, Cronewood. So, <laughs> uh, thanks again. Uh, we've got a lot more stuff coming up on on the Dark Parade. Uh, we are launching into a new month with uh, with a look at the Gate and the Gate Two on the main episodes. Um, we've got plenty more coming, and a new Heart of Horror, new What You Watch, and all of that fun stuff. Uh, as always, if you would be sure you're sharing the show around and rate it and review it where it is possible to do so. Um, we are also on YouTube. If you go to, uh, youtube.com forward slash Legion podcasts, uh, giving a little thumbs up on the videos helps a lot too. So any of that stuff that you can do, I sincerely appreciate it. I thank you for listening and that will do it for this episode of the dark parade found footage fool. We'll see you next time. <laughs>